Hello everyone. Welcome to the HSPF training by DSI. This is video HSPF 320. We learn how to create a simple HSPF model in Basin. In the first video, what we did was that we went ahead and downloaded a lot of data from Basin. And this is one of the projects that I that already has data. So these are the shape files that are on the left side you can see. And if you go and click on manage data, this is the WDM data set that was downloaded for uh, all the grids that are around this uh, watershed. Now, what we will do is that we will create a sub watershed shape file and a reach this shape file. So in general, just to give you a little bit of idea, the NHT plus data that was downloaded had this catchment sub watersheds. Now these are extremely detailed and very useful. However, um, in most of the modeling uh, problems, we may not need this detailed uh, delineation. So it is possible that you may have to go and merge some of those uh, sub watersheds. It is also possible that one of the measuring sta station or one of the discharge stations or some point sources do not match these, this catchment boundary and then you may have to subdivide a sub watershed. So those kind of things are very project specific. What we will do is we'll make a generic sub watershed shape file and then we'll go from there. So to do that, we'll go to watershed delineation, click on automatic. So in this case, we have two, uh, two DM grids. One is NHD plus and one is digital elevation model. So this is the data I got from NHD plus elevation. The units are centimeters. And it already has, uh, it already is designed based on the um, discharge uh, flow line features. So I don't need to burn in an existing streamline uh, polyline and I want watersheds to be at least well let's say 20 acres uh, 20 square miles that might be too, too much so let's say 10 square miles and I'd also use a custom uh, outlet layer so envis theory discharge station so this is the stations where the discharge happens uh, the where we have the NVIS uh, data available. There are two NVIS stations and that's it. So what then I'll do is I'll click run all and then we'll come back and see what uh, processing has been done and what new uh, shape files have been created by Basin. Okay, so it took about uh, six, seven minutes for it to generate three shape files outlet merge so outlet is based on the outlet of this location where uh, there's a uh, endless stations are there so based on this and this um then we can check that off these red colored watershed shape file is based on the drainage that we provided so it was we said like 10 or 15 square miles is the minimum um then stream reach shape file is so that every sub watershed has a stream and that's it so we'll turn off every other uh, shape file and turn on this watershed shape file and stream reach now let's look at the attribute so there are about 54 sub watersheds every sub watershed has a unique stream link or you can call it as a sub watershed number and what the length of the stream in there some of these things I uh, don't think are uh, important here uh, area in different units and average slope for each sub watershed now if you look at the attributes of stream reaches you will see that that is also 54 so for each sub watershed it created a stream reach. The way creation of 
uh, HSPF model from Basin's work is it, it has to have one stream reach for each sub watershed. Later on, you may edit those things, but for creation, you need to have that. Then this link number is the same as the stream link. DS link number is a downstream where it's flowing to. Then the length, and we can ignore a lot of those things. Uh, it's uh, slope and high and low elevations. It calculates based on, it also uh, tells you the upstream area and downstream square miles, how much is the area contributing to that, uh, that specific sub watershed or that uh, reach. And based on that, it calculates the mean width and mean depth. So if you are creating the shape files in some other um, program, you need to make sure that you have these attributes that are very important for basins to create an HSPF model. And we look at those attributes again when we are creating the model. So models HSPF. So I'm saying that I'm going to create a new uh, HSPF model. Let's call it snake underscore 310. Uh, 320. Land use type is NLCD grid. Subbasins layer is the same as it was created here. Streams is that was created here. This is for advanced. If you want to do snow simulation, we'll skip that for now. In land use, so the land use layer is NLCD 2060 land cover that we downloaded earlier. This classification is based on a file that is at this location. If you want to have a different classification, or then you can go ahead and edit that file, or you can find a, a different uh, DBF file for that. And, and note that this is a .dbf file, so you can edit this file in Excel, but to save it, you need um, labor office or open office. So you would need to have labor office to actually play with this file. It's a very simple DBA file. You, once you open it, you'll understand what, uh, how it works. Okay. Then let's go to stream stack. Now these things are already filled because basins created this, uh, shape file on its own. So it knows what are all the specific attributes mean and what are their units. If you have made the shape file on your own, then you will have to make sure that these match. Subbasins, streamlink is the name as, uh, same as subwatershed number, slope, model segment ID. In this case, we'll keep the model segment ID as none, and we'll talk about that in the, in the next video. Uh, we'll ignore the point sources for now, med stations. So there are so many med stations available, but in this case, uh, since we have only one model segment, we will apply only one uh, MET station. So you can select any of this uh, MET station. Let's select this one. So this, these are the MET stations, of the data that was downloaded earlier. So if I go file, uh, manage data, this is the, the WDM file analysis list. No. So these are the 94 data sets. All at all of these locations, there is time series data available for the HSPF model in correct units. So <clears throat> since it, this data is already there, Basins knows those data sets are there and it tells you the availability of data. And then we click on OK. And then Basins calculates how much area is in each sub watersheds and makes a UCI file for that. So we'll wait until that process is complete. All right, it took a couple of minutes for basins to complete this process. One word of caution, if you have a big watershed and the land use is in shape file format, it will take a long time or it may not work. To make sure that it 
basins produces an HSPF model, the land use should be in grid format, raster format data. Okay, so WinHSPF window is open and we have not looked at WinHSPF window in previous courses, but we were looking at UCI file before. This is GUI version of that and we can do all those things here also. Um, so what we will do is quickly is we'll want to run it. So we'll go to global block and we want to reduce the time because what Basins does is that it makes the model for the longest period of the data available, but we want to make it very short, 2015. to 2016, 12, 31. So it's uh, two years, apply, okay. So the model is going to run for two years and we click on run simulation. It says the changes have been made, click on okay. And hopefully it should run. Okay, looks like it ran. But we haven't set up the model in the details of looking at the outputs and, and all of those things. And some of that we have already seen in the previous uh, courses. Some of that we will see in the uh, next few courses. So this was the step in which we created a simple HSPF model. So what we will do now is we will look at the UCI file that we created because uh, we are used to uh, seeing the UCI file in text format. So generally it creates model in C drive basins 45 slash model out. So snake 320 was created right now and we will open this UCI file. Okay, so this is the UCI file that was created. This is the location of the NLDAS file. And it's the relative file structure. And we change this uh, start time here. The per lengths are 101 to 108 and then implant is 102. Let's look at general information block for per length. Okay, so it made these land uses based on the uh, classification that we provided and these are the eight different land uses and 101 stands for water wetlands 102 stands for urban and again now we look at ext sources block that all the perlins get the meteorological input from one grid data here the same same for implant and for the for all the reaches. What it now what it means that whether the land use such as let's say forest, whether a forest land use is here or whether a forest land use is here in the watershed, all of that has same parameterization. So when we do model segmentation, when we select different, different segments in the model, we actually provide different parameters to those. Those parameters may include the land use properties, the slope, and they also include the uh, meteorological station that will be the boundary condition for that, uh, that operation. So for example, Perlin 101 is uh, water and wetland here. Now the Perlin 101 is, if I look at this map here, the water and wetland, whether that is here. So uh, if I just look at Perlin 101 in the schematic block. So in the schematic block, you see, 8,000 acres of Perlin 101 is going into reach one, 13,000 is going to reach two, 7,000 is going to reach three. So, and if you remember from previous courses, Perlin 101 is a 
type of operation and all the calculations, all the parameterization is happening on a unit area basis. So Perlin, the properties of Perlin 101 will not change. How much of the Perlin 101 is going into each reach is changing. So if you want to have a model so that it has different parameters based on where it is located in the watershed or what soils it may have or what meteorological station is providing data, then we will need to do um, model segmentation. So that we will do in, a, in the next video that is HSPF 330. So that's it for this video. Uh, meet you in the next one. Thank you.